Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, welcome also new subscribers. Uh, it's lovely to have you here. So firstly, thank you for the uh, <laughs> torrent of love that you sent to, to help me celebrate my birthday. Um, I was blown away. Thank you so much for your loving wishes. Um, I was pampered beyond belief and basically carried around like the Queen of Sheba. <laughs> One of the best birthdays I can ever remember. So thank you very much. Right. Um, I want to have a peep again into December. Um, there's some movers and shakers happening. So I've had a look at everything really for December. And I'm just going to bring some bits that jump out. Um, an explosion of cards lies on the table. which is pregnant with change, all right? So first of all, we have the full moon happening in Gemini on December the 8th, two days time from now. And that's happening at 16 degrees, okay. Hmm. So we currently have Mars retrograde in Gemini. And there's a big question in there about how we use our light, how we bring light into the heart space. Um, so it's associated with tower energy. And so it might be that we tell ourselves a new truth. It could be as simple as that. It could be that someone else tells us a truth. So consider everything that comes your way. The moves into Capricorn, 21st of December. Oh, that's midwinter, isn't it? Or winter equinox. Today, Mercury enters Capricorn, which asks a question about how you communicate your authority, which asks a question about when you're building, where are you coming from? What's your motivation? What's your love in this? And also today, Mercury squares Jupiter. So it's that tantalizing expansion in the conflict of that square. It's, there's a dare in there. It's like it's daring you. December the 10th, Venus enters Capricorn. Um, also, Mercury goes retrograde December the 29th, but that's quite a way ahead. So Venus coming into Capricorn is kind of the addition to that question of how do we express ourselves through love? It's coming back to love language again, isn't it? Communication. Um, two days ago, Neptune went direct. And that's going to support the intuition. It's going to support accessing the field. Mm. And Neptune will be retrograde in Pisces. Sorry. Is going direct until January the 1st, New Year's Day. Uh, I quite like this one. Pluto is conjunct Lilith on December the 13th. <laughs> so we'll see what comes through, but I can see that coming through here in the challenge. Um, I notice also that the North Node is at 11 degrees and 33 minutes. Two master numbers there. It's, a, it's like higher intelligence. It's higher intuition. And very creative. 
And then at last, Chiron goes direct. It's been a long retrograde. And that happens on December the 23rd. I saw there we go. Yeah, Christmas Day, Mercury is in a sextile with Neptune. <laughs> and here I see families gathered around the uh, Christmas table, maybe fogging the issue. And this asks me a question. Let's call this the Christmas dinner table, Mercury, sextile, Neptune. Sextile is uh, favorable. And for me, this asks the question about, yeah, because Mercury will be in Capricorn by then. And it's the question about, in this moment, am I living the life I was born into or am I living the life I came here to live? Am I fogging so I don't upset anyone? Am I masking? filtering, censoring. Okay, that's that. Now, how are you, by the way? How have you experienced the transition between November and December? And how has your first week in December been? <clears throat> All right. First card out, <laughs> Mars, retro in Gemini. Okay, and, ah, I see. <laughs> so this is bringing in a higher understanding, a more philosophical understanding of perhaps what might have been a difficult conversation. The urge to go to war without using a higher wisdom, the higher understanding. And we're in such season, not for you, Chris, really, but let's play the Western game because it's easier. And it doesn't really matter. I'm finding with astrology, it's all kind of melting into one. <laughs> so sidereal, 13 sign, Western astrology, it's just like I can see themes running through all the disciplines. So I don't get too hung up on which discipline I follow. The messages are gonna come out anyway, I trust that. All right. So Mars retro in Gemini is opposite Sagittarius. So it might be that Sagittarius is getting a better viewpoint. So where signs oppose on the wheel, that's we're looking straight into our shadow. So the, so the shadow aspect of oh, Sag is Gemini and vice versa. And it's to do with communication, higher communication. So Mars is the challenger. <laughs> it's funny, I'm moving the cards around and what I see I've organized is something that looks like a dinner table with a seating <laughs> I might call this the Christmas dinner table. Let's see what else comes out. All right. So. Mm. Mm. See, there's a challenge even in this, coming in on that 30 energy. 30 is highly creative. It's coming into the sixth house of routine the mundane. So this is about how do we bring more creativity to the everyday stuff that we've got to do? It might be as simple as making a telephone call or sending an email. Yeah, absolutely. Are we conforming to business speak or can we weave some creativity, love, a higher expression? into that because this is we're in a kind of 
phase of culmination and what have we learned and how are we applying that? Because we can do the spiritual, mental, emotional transformation, but until we bring it through that fourth gateway into the physical, it's just a concept. It's still in that triangle. It's still in the intelligence. So we need to birth it. And here's the challenge straight into the sixth house. What do I do on a regular basis that I can elevate now, that I can put into practice? And again, it comes back to that question of conformity to the life we were born into, karma, or breakthrough into the life we want to live, dharma. <laughs> and that sixth house of routine is sitting across the table from the seven ha seventh house of relationships. It's not just partnerships, this is relationships. And the 31 wants the transformation. It wants to build. It wants to build something new. I've got this little flash of Uranian electricity coming down into the communication between people. And that might be conflict. And conflict can be very healthy when you know why you're in there, when you know what you want to achieve, when you know what you want to bring and birth, very conscious. <laughs> so at the head of the table, we have Mars and Sagittarius facing each other. And sitting across the middle of the table. I might put that in the middle actually. Oh, that feels good. So we have two at the top, two out here, two at the bottom, a card in the middle, building the table. <laughs> so the two cards at the bottom of the table, and they appear to be holding down this energy, are you know that 48-12-3 is It's coming out of old karmic contracts into personal of the personal authority of the 12th three. I'm surprised we don't have Capricorn in the house. So it's just the movement into destiny, out of karma, into dharma, into your destiny. What you destined for yourself. And there's a challenge with all change and with all births. All births are painful <laughs> in some kind of way. This is just giving me the silence of the void. And it might be that silence is the most powerful tool in your box. It might be that in this energy, you can move to that higher expression of the seeker in Sagittarius, the witness. And you can witness what happens around this December table The celebration table that doesn't always celebrate, it's a myth. It's a very, very calm, strong, centered, balanced energy, very strong. And sitting in the middle, Remember, we have the North Node at 1133, 11 degrees, 33 minutes. Coming in on that 41.5, it seeks the rise and the expansion. Woof. 
Wow, I can feel that coming straight into the heart. That's just like sunshine coming through the heart. And how do you bring your sunshine? This North Node is currently in Taurus. It represents the destiny point. It's challenging us to build. It might even be challenge, challenging us to create this of light. Oh, wow, look at this. This is, this is what I felt. It's literally sunshine lighting up the heart space. So that's just the basic reading. Underlying energy. <laughs> wow. Coming in on that 44, just like building heaven on earth. It's bringing worlds together causing collisions, <laughs> daring to be different. Lots of masculine energy here. <sighs> There's Saturn. Oh, I knew it, but I didn't say it. How many times? Say it, be it, do it, feel it. I know it. How do you know? Because I know. Prove it, I know. Oh, oh my God, this is in. Let's clarify seventh house relationships. Well, 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 that's very, very, very interesting. So I'm going to keep all of this reading in the first house of self. And this could just be as simple as when you birth the tiger within you, the tiger that waits and senses, the tiger that can take a pulse with its teeth. When you hold that energy, how you bring yourself back, it's a very powerful, focused energy. And it might be as simple as you find out who your friends are at Christmas time. <laughs> Christmas is such a powerful catalyst because it's so full of lies and distortions and mythology. But right behind Christmas is this beautiful kind of old pagan magic. And it's like this tiger wants to walk us backwards to re... claim my eye goes straight to this pre-christian femininity okay yeah all right let's look at north node life's purpose and obviously, these are collective messages, so take what lands, leave what doesn't, own your journey. Okay. 
Now then, this came through. This came through last week. And as we heal the earth element in ourself, we heal the earth that we walk upon. As we grow in respect for our physicality, we grow in respect for the earth. And this also whispers to ancestors. It's the symbiosis. This is the, the breath that I was speaking about. I can feel it much better than I can describe it. Unification. Separation is an illusion. I am not separate to the earth. Nothing is separate in the quantum field. Show me what else you want to clarify, please. Okay, so these two cards fell on top of revolution. And they are So this is speaking to Neptune going direct and the access to a deeper level of intuition is coming in on that seven of the mystic and that the shadow side of the mystic is seven of swords, the thief in the night, the imposter energy that comes in to challenge us to know. This is magnetism where we pull towards us. <laughs> we sit like the Queen of Sheba. And as long as we're holding our vibration in the key of what we want to attract, then it will, by the laws of physics, come to us. No, so this is no more pushing. Stop pushing. Or push if it feels good. It's something you've got to go through. My aim is never to be directive in these videos. That is... Stunning. Yeah, that is just wow. I've got Sirius coming in here as well. Sirius representing the spiritual sun. This is the our sun. And she's connected to her higher self. Wow, this is some alignment here. The wings that travel between worlds, bringing that light down. This is earth healing. Gosh, these cards are powerful. <laughs> Beautiful. And I can feel this wonderful expansion happening in my throat as I speak into this card. Wow. So again, these are clarifying eclipse energy, which that Sagittarius new moon <laughs> seems to have brought. And we're still in eclipse season, remember. 49, 13, 4. I've got Eros coming through here. Effort plus intention. And again, if you know, if we're talking about the Christmas dinner table, why am I in this? Am I in this? Or am I just going to sit in that 45.9 and stare straight into the void, get really quiet and knowing? Uh, 
And Eros is speaking to the denial of the feminine. So there's a choice. Our energy is now moving from the throat down into the solar plexus. It's talking about will. The will to achieve. Look at the power that's behind her. And this is feeling ancient. This beast here is feeling ancient. Hmm. Right. So my body's spontaneously gone into a Kundalini rising here. So I've got this inner tremor, <laughs> tremor, inner tremor going on. I'll just let that play through. So that's Kundalini awakening there. Okay, that's done. Thank you. Um, I'm really enjoying these cards. <laughs> so this is the new goddess deck. Priestess? Priestess deck that I got last week. Is there anything else you'd like to compliment? Right, where am I going next? I'm going here. No, there. They appear to be dropping into a pause. <laughs> so, it's, it, okay, I've got two decks speaking to me now. Let's go, Shaman Oracle. Lilith's coming in here. I think Lilith is coming in here. It's a lot of energy moving. <laughs> If you're in this energy shift right now here, um, lots of water, lots of water. I want to notice as well here that there's an energy rising up through the heart from the solar plexus to open the throat. And the crow is looking towards the moon. Rather than the fire of the sun, it's going to pull from that moon energy. It's going to pull through what is hidden. Or what is known and has been deliberately hidden. Or suppressed in the self. Yeah, completely. That's that 33. And there's the trickster. If, if you're in some kind of, right, okay, let me talk to this. Yeah, completely. I'm gonna hold this card while I talk to this. In order for us to have any kind of experience, we need to witness the tension of opposites. Otherwise, there is no experience. 
there is only either all light or all dark and that does not exist. And so we choose. When we rise up out of duality, it's either good or bad. You're either good or bad because I need to feel some kind of way about myself in that transaction. When we rise up out of duality and move into polarity, it's good and bad and can I hold both? How do I hold both responsibly for my highest good? Well, one of the first early steps is I identify my shitty narrative. I'd love to be able to do that, but I can't. Oh, the amount of people I've said, to... <laughs> can you paint it out? I can't paint. Can you hold a paintbrush? Yes, then you can paint. It's the ego that seeks that instant perfection without any of the labor of love to get it wrong, to move into that life is messy and I'm making a mess. But it's all the perfection of art in matter. It's, it's weaving the beauty way, beautiful thinking, rather than trickster thinking. To birth something that we can't yet explain. We call it magic. It just hasn't been edified by science, but, you know, it's, this 33 whispers the application of science to magic. They're the same thing. One edifies the other, validates the other. They are the same thing, just different languages. So how do we weave the beauty way? And this is an action. This is active for build. How do we build the beauty way? How do we put beauty onto the Christmas table? How do we bring our beauty? Or do we behave the same as the negativity that might be swirling around at Christmas? Do we just get sucked into that? Or do we dare to beam? Beam. <laughs> There's lots of daring energy. I love this energy. Yeah. Look. Lots of threes coming through. So we're birthing the blueprint. Well, we're holding the blueprint. And practicing that higher expression of self in peaceful self-regulation. That's that 45 energy of just staring. Just staring. Nothing, there's nothing here. Oh, now that's interesting. Now, okay, what's happening here? Stay in the mystery. Look, look. we have this coming out to clarify revolution, and the next underlying card is this and to clarify the seventh house of relationships, we have this. And here I'm gonna to defer to you and I'm gonna say, make of that what you will, okay? I'm deliberately not gonna put, I'm sitting here. <laughs> I'm not gonna put that on anybody's radar, I'm just going to notice that little trifecta there. And I'm going to sit in the void. I'm going to sit in the not knowingness. Twin flames, divine feminine, divine masculine. What if I put that there? That there. Oh, I don't know. Uh, wow. I don't know if there's space at the table for these. What if it's that? Right, it's that. Bear with me. Mm. They don't want to be at the table. I don't know where they want to be. 
the masculine and the feminine. I don't know where they want to be. They can't find their place in this system. Got it, thank you. Right. Because they're not here yet. Okay, wow. Hot. Awakening. Awakening. Right. So this is about the personal. If we're talking around the table, we have seventh house of relationships, clarified by twin flame. This can't find its place because it's still coming in. And the big challenge is around the Christmas table, how do we balance that within ourselves? How do we be passive and active? How do we balance? What is our expression? It's love language again. Where's the beauty way? I want to put those three together. So when are we in our feminine? When are we in our masculine? <laughs> Neptune and Pisces, very feminine, very receptive. When are we in our masculine? Mars retro in Gemini, the house of communication. Active masculine, coming in on the eight, wants to build. Wow. And can I give myself this? This is the question. Can I give myself, look at this image. Can I let something be birthed through me? This is ancient. It's like bringing that ancient feminine. Where is the ancient masculine? Let's ask that as a question. How are we doing for time? Where is the ancient masculine? Really? Where is the ancient masculine? What is the ancient masculine? getting Merlin energy here. Past, present, future. She does not look happy. She looks like she's sulking. Let's keep going. Just that eight again. Community, Aquarius, chop wood, carry water. What they say to me is he is becoming 
working at it. I wonder what would come through if we did a reading called Resurrection of the Masculine. So if I read these cards literally, where is the ancient masculine? He is here and now in the community, chopping wood to get to the land of milk and honey. And the clock says 10.10. 10. Rebirth. All right, and I'm going to leave that there. All right, let's start wrapping this up. Okay, I've just got the song, You Can Go Your Own Way. Is it Fleetwood Mac? You Can Go Your Own Way. You don't have to be a part of the Christmas dinner, Christmas narrative if it isn't in alignment with you and again this is 14 of discernment the temperance card discern it temper it self-regulate what's going on in you because also here what might get lifted up are old triggers old familial triggers karma stuff <laughs> all right let's start wrapping this up it's funny, when I rewatch my videos, because as soon as I click end recording, I forget. <laughs> no idea what's coming through. But when I watch them, the time between me saying, right, let's start wrapping this up, is enormous. I have no intention of wrapping it up. I'm having way too much fun. So let's pretend to start wrapping this up. <laughs> what are the final messages, please, for this snapshot into December. What are the final messages? Yeah. Oh, well, I love you cards. I love you. <laughs> Follow the moon. Receptive, listen. Seek your answers within. Because a new day dawns, that 1010. A new day dawns. <sighs> <laughs> That's it. I'm going to love you and leave you. I'm going to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for being here um, and for sharing this space with your love and your stories and sharings. Um, it makes it all very rich and worthwhile. So thanks for being here. I'll leave you with my love for now and I will speak with you again soon. Take care. Bye bye.